<laughs> All right, everybody. Woo! We are here with Miguel Myers at Kratos BI Live, Data God, Lunch and Learn, number two. So excited, Miguel, to have you here. Welcome to the live stream. How are you doing? I'm really good. Thanks for inviting me. I'm so excited to share with the community and your audience what we have for them. Oh. When I first saw that you, you were doing this, I got goosebumps. Um, uh, <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know if my camera can, can, sh can show it. Can you see the goosebumps? It is just, they're, they're standing up. I'm so excited. So Miguel, thank you for, for joining us and talking about this. Hey, to everyone who joined the live stream, thank you guys for tuning in. We really appreciate you taking your time because this is really going to be a, a big thing that Miguel's working on and he can't be successful unless you help. So we're, there's going to be several points inside this conversation where we're going to be calling out and asking for you to get involved. And uh, I, I really hope that you do. If you have questions during this live stream, please put those down into the chat. Preface it with a Q colon so that I can start to queue those up and, and hit Miguel with this stuff. Um, but before we get into any of this, these things, um, we want to kick off our lunch and learn with our a little sip of beverage to kind of get everybody up and running. So let's all do this all together. Hey, let's take that sip. Ah, all so right. Good. <laughs> Let's get into it. Miguel, do you want to introduce yourself to everybody? Of course, yep. Yeah. Um, my name is Miguel Myers. I used to work for the customer advisory team for Power BI. And my role back then was to help customers and users to understand how they can use data visualizations in Power BI and how can they effectively re uh, design reports in Power BI. Many of the demos that you're going to see in some events like the Gartner, uh, Ignite and all, all of those events, uh, they were designed by me and by part of the team to expose it as best practices. Now, I was uh, the, the team offered me the opportunity to be part of the product team, and they gave me the, the role uh, to be the data visualization um, PM or product manager. And I just started being PM two months ago. So I'm really excited. Everything is new, but I have a lot of good stuff that I can bring into this new role. And I want you as community to be part of this as well. Well, awesome. Miguel, thank you so much. Uh, and frankly, I, I think I was first introduced to you or, or your work. Uh, uh, there was a dashboard you did with like stars as like the homepage. And like you could like hover over like stars and then explode into mm -hmm. things. And I have oh. never seen a better mashup of incredibly beautiful visuals as, or like phot photography, but then mashing that up with data and making it interactive and explorable. I was blown away. And so thank you for, for that creation. And I think you created the skateboard design too, right? That's correct. I, de I designed that one with Chris Hamill and other dashboards. Um, I believe at some point I'm going to work with the marketing team to put in the website all demos that I have designed along the years, and then people can just go access and take them from there and get inspired. However, my role now as a PM is for you to have the best data visualization uh, shown by default. So you create the visual, you design your report, and it should look beautiful with the minimum effort. Oh, oh there's no one better. I don't think there's anyone better for this job. I, I, I am super excited about this. But yeah. we're doing a lot of talking here about like how do we change this? How do we make this stuff different? And um, uh, maybe we need to kind of help the viewers see, you know, the people who are just joining in and, and dialing in now. What the heck are we talking about? What is this roadmap? What's your future uh, going to be? And I, I know you did a, a live stream, about to share that link uh, in the chat right now. Please don't click on this link and go over there and leave this. Save this for later, right? Um, uh, you wanna be part of this conversation, but I think this is a, a, a good thing you could go to and check this out in a bit. Um, but Miguel, maybe we should go over to your desktop and, and kind of run through some of the things that you're talking about. Does that sound good? That sounds great. Awesome. Let's do that. 
Okay, so your desktop right. up is up. We see the future of data visualization. Holy cow. Yeah, the future of data visualization is bright. And it's bright because you're going to be part of it. Um, we're going to have many changes in how we work on features in Power BI. And I'm going to show with you part of it at this session. Uh, just, just to show you right away the things that, 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 that we're going to do uh, in this uh, next month is we, uh, as part of the strategy, we are dividing this into two buckets. What is the, the quick wins or customer wish list, which is supposed to be items that many people were asking for so long, and they do not require so much work in, in the engineering side, and maybe even very little from the design part. Uh, so then we can do those ones while we invest a large amount of time to develop or even redesign visualizations from scratch. And that's the visual improvements that you can see in the right side. So we have a, a roadmap that I'm going to show you in a moment that it's going to change how we work with data visualizations. But because we know that this is going to take too long, we don't want you to wait for many months to see new changes. So that's why the customer wish list or quick wins can come handy because Every month you can see improvements while you get the large work done. That's fantastic. I like to think of that type of thing as like uh, in the military or the Marines, they call it like run and gun, right? So like someone provides cover fire, you know, so your quick yeah. wins while you engineer and rebuild the stuff from the, the ground up. That's awesome. That's correct. Uh, and uh, one of the things that we want to do as a large investment is the container. Oh. For those ones that do not understand what is the container concept, it's everything that every visualization uses as a background. If you go to the format pane and then you go to general option, you, you, you're going to see that you can change the size, you can change um, the color of the background, the title, and, and other, other settings. So that's the container. And, and the first improvements that we're going to do is allow, allowing you to use a subtitle and then you're going to be able to use a header divider. So we want to have a new concept of this is the header, this is the body, and in the future, we can even add, add a footer. And now we're going to have a more uh, mature container that we, we can use in multiple ways. You're going to be able to finally uh, manipulate the padding. So that negative space that we usually need around the visual uh, now it's going to be part of the of the visualizations. We won't need to put shapes in the background or images, and then not anymore. The visualization they have that negative space to really improve the look and feel. Um, oh man! Uh, the core, uh, so uh, to say that we're going to have padding in our visuals so that we are not having them overlap and bounce on things is just. That amazing. Is, that is amazing. Beautiful. Yeah, thumbs yeah. up. I'm so excited. Uh, the car visual is one of the visuals that, that we have seen in our telemetry that are the most used. Mm -hmm. So the card has a lot of limitations. It hasn't been improved for a long period of time. And what we want to do is instead of you having a, imagine that we have a page with a lot of cards, mm -hmm. instead of you having so many cards, you can have only one single container that can carry all the cards that you need. And you can individually manipulate the settings for each card. So that's another exciting because now we're going to improve performance. It's going to be so much easier for you to align them or to, to have the perfect separation between cards because those settings are going to be part of the new card visualization. Uh, mm. Just like you can see here, more uh, shapes, you're, you're, you're going to be able to, to modify the layout or the grid of these cards. And then later on, we're going to support small multiples. So you can uh, split these cards into multiple ca categories based on another field. And, and later on, we're going to improve it even further. Um, other one is... Hey, one same. question before we move on uh, beyond the container side. Um, Christian is asking, will there be different container sections? Well, or sorry, will the different container sections be engineered as one or multiple visuals when rendering? For the for the container? Yeah. No, in the card, no. The, the card at this moment is going to split that. Like, imagine that this is like the navigation button. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. The navigation button, what happens is we import that in the canvas, in the page. And then every time when you add a new page, the navigation button add new buttons. Mm. So that those buttons are all containing one single container. Okay. The, the car is going to do the same. So you can drag a measure in the in the build pane, and it will show you one card. And then you can drag another measure, and it will split two cards, and so on. So you can have all many cards in that same container. I hope that that answers the question. Yeah, I I think that does. Thank you. Yep. So imagine that this is we're using the same technology as what we have for the navigation uh, buttons. If okay. you need to understand that a little bit more, uh, open up, check the navigation buttons, and that will give you an idea. However, I have some uh, examples that maybe I can show you to understand more where we are going with the new car. Uh, then yes. the states. So states is a very interesting capability that Power BI offered when we introduced the buttons. So that means that you can specify when you select, when you hover, when you click on something, uh, or when it's default. Or even for the drill through has another state that is called uh, inactive or, or something like that. When when it's not um, that something is not uh, properly active at that moment, you can keep it um, as a gray out button. Um, those states are missing in many features. Mm -hmm. One of them is the slicer, the detail slicer. So when you use a, a slicer in a horizontal uh, layout, there is no way for you to say when it's selected, make it green or red. Uh, it's always that gray color, like dark gray. And, and then there is no way to control the hover on the tile slicer or the slicer itself. You're, you're moving your, your mouse on top of the slicer and, and, and it's not clear what it's hovered or selected. Only with the icon or the checkbox that, that is beside. But those states that we support for buttons should be around many other areas, including the slicer. And we want to start uh, making the states more generic across all these visualizations, starting with the, with the slicer uh, visual. How about, um, uh, Anthony was asking in the chat about the ability to like have the slicers update based upon the availability of data, right? So it can be dynamic in nature. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's another part with the, that we want to do with labels. Uh, we want to make uh, dynamic uh, selections with with uh, another measure that you might have, uh, et cetera. But the label, the extensive work that we're going to do for labels is going to establish the foundation of how we want to improve data visualizations in general. And labels is not just the, the, the labels that we know. Uh, that is the like that the, the, the data labels, the total labels, serial labels, all these labels that you can see, and even the call-out labels. So all those ones are going to be reviewed, are going to be improved, and you're going to do things that not even your wildest dreams were able to do unless you were screwing things up in the report. But now it's going to be part of the tool. It's going to allow it by default, and it's going to be flexible. And we want to do it with labels. So can you confirm that as part of this, we're going to ensure that we have common functionality and visual options broadly across the tooling? So between labels, between slicers. I mean, I, I think at one point in time, I counted um, I counted five different scroll bar op visual options. Yeah. And uh, some you could change, some you couldn't, and they're just different. and. No matter what you did, they were different. And uh, are, are we going to see some consistency brought in there? Yeah, uh, it, it, my my dogma is, or my um, motto is, if you see it, you should be able to modify it. If you see a scroll bar, then you should be able to say, maybe I want my scroll bar to be red. Uh, I want to give those controls. Mm -hmm. And that's why the state is something that we are missing. Uh, if you hover a plot chart or a column chart, there is no indication that that's been hovered. Uh, we want to provide states as well for visualizations. So then it's clear when something is selected, when it's in, on hover, or, on, on, or when it's not selected. Um, consistency is one of the things that we are after. Oh, fantastic. For the cu customer wish list or quick wins, the condition formatting staff we want to improve. Uh, there is a lot of things that we want to do there, but we want to start with 
measure driven data labels because it's part of the label work that we that, that we are doing and that will allow you to use certain values instead of the ones that we give you by default imagine that in this example that i have here this is the column and usually the the information that you'll see here is the number of the cells but maybe you want to show just a symbol like a triangle going up and down uh, according to the percentage of growth month over month so now you're going to be able to exchange it and say don't show me the the labels show me this other measure mm. and now it's going to replace it so that's basically what this measure driven data levels is doing to to provide that flexibility oh that's fantastic and, and data interactions has been a pain because when we have so many elements and then you need to manage the interactions between each of them uh is really tough to handle it in the way that we have it at this moment so we're going to make sure that we have a very good UI, like a panel or something like the, yeah, very similar of the um, formatting pane. But this, this one needs to be for data interactions. And you can manage them, cancel them, group them, uh, and, 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 and make adjustments for those interactions quite faster and, and easier. Oh, that, that's going to be a quick win. That's fantastic. So, um... Uh, again, you're doing the run and gun, right? So you're going to be putting out some of these customer wish list items. They're they're easier to to get in place, and I like that because I know how difficult it is to implement changes inside of uh, orgs I've worked at. Um, and the, it seems like the bigger the org, the bigger the install base, the longer that change process is to get something out. Uh, more complicated yeah. it is for a team to learn to go through this. So. I like the idea that you're going to start with some easy things to work through that that deployment process and get that stuff down so you understand how that works so that when it comes time for the bigger things, you're ready for that. That's when, correct. When do you think we're going to see the first quick wins? Is that I believe six March. Months? March? March, yeah. Oh, I thought March I was going to be lucky in six months. That's... <laughs> That's no, no, in, in March, you're going to start seeing them. And from that month to late, like every month after March, you're going to see uh, the work that I'm doing with the, with the designers and with uh, the engineers. Oh, my And gosh. obviously, the community representatives are playing a huge role into all this. And, I, and I'll talk about that uh, later. That's fantastic. Um, hey, a, a question came in from Christian about... Um, are there any plans to integrate the IBCS or international business community standards or communication standards uh, inside the next gen visuals? Uh, I believe that's not going to be part of my role, but I can ask if that's going to be something that we're going to do. Okay. I, know the PM, I know the PM is the one that knows that. Okay, awesome. All right. Yep. Uh, the, and, and like I said, using again conditional formatting, we want to allow you to use selection for slicers. So you can say select always the, the, the last month or the last seven days or select me automatically the 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 product that has the, the largest sales. Who knows? And that selection will change the dynamically according to the date. Hold on one second. Finally, uh, wow. and, and this is an idea from Matt Lee, which is uh, my engineer. Uh, he works for the data visualization team. And he said, man, we need to put this one. And, and I, I look at it and I say, yeah, for sure we have to. So all credit goes to him. <laughs> uh, well, um, and, and Brian Julius in, in the chat was calling out and said, boy, it'd be great if we could get a slicer default value. So that'd be awesome. So yeah. everyone's yeah, looking for this. This is a huge hit. Yeah, and quick win as well. Yeah. Uh, the other one that we are still thinking, how can we work on as a quick win is to manage the tooltip uh, area. So maybe you have a, a column chart that you want to show the tooltips by default, but right now what happens is it will show you as a tooltip every component that that visualization is made of. So if we have for the x-axis dates and for the y-axis sales, in the tooltip is going to show you cells and the date because those are the components that you're using for that visualization. The complaints we are receiving is that sometimes 
People only want to see the sales and they don't want to see the date. I mean, I'm giving you a very basic example, but there are complex ex examples where actually it's important to do not showcase part of the components that that visualization was made of and just keep light or maybe just the ones that really matter. And there is no way at this moment to, to control that. And with the customer wish list uh, item is to allow that control. A any ability to have a tool tip or uh, like a, a pop-up where we can now start to interact with that window? Uh, that's part of the big uh, That's part of the bigger of one? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a big one. Uh, and yes, that's something that I, 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 I'm going to work with another PM that owns tool tips. So then we can both collaborate and get that part done. Because I, I really want to see a tool tip with a, a, a power app or a power automate like right inside that tool tip to give people action right inside my visuals and oh, yes. that'd be incredible. Yes, yes. Uh, me too. <laughs> uh, and how this is going to work, that's what I'm going to show you today. So we have multiple changes in the structure that we are doing for the whole data visualization development. And that starts with the design framework. So the design framework is based on three principles. Human cognition, which is you should see a visualization no matter how complex that visual is. And you should your brain should find patterns easily you should find trends, you should find uh, the insights that that visualization was designed for with, with not much effort. And our brain uses, or it's already using certain ways to, to inter interpret reality. And that's why, that's how we survive as human species. And, and we want to use that in our advantage, in our advantage to redesign and, and, and make the functionality of our visualizations more in pro of human cognition. In the human perception side, it's all about emotion. So what we are trying to do in every new setting that we are uh, redesigning from scratch is that you should be able to see that visual to alone or around many other visualizations and you should feel good with it. Like it should look nice, it should look fresh, it should look uh, professional. And we know that because only few amount of report creators have the time to, to change the look and feel of the report. They rely a lot on the defaults that Power BI gives them. And that's why we have this, uh, unfairly, we have this uh, idea that Power BI is the ugly tool when actually you can make beautiful stuff, but the problem is it will require time and knowledge to do it. And we want to wait, move away from that. We want to give you something that you feel good right away. And accessibility is not just for um, like colorblind. No, no, no. Accessibility should be how you can understand the data. Like, like you, if you can see it, if you can navigate, if you can explore it, and how easy it is for you to do it. If you use a mouse, if you use a keyword, if you use a, a, a screen reader or whatever technology you use in order to, to navigate and explore the, those visualizations, it should be very easy to find. It should be very easy to visualize it, to navigate. And basically, the, the user experience for report creators or report consumers needs to be really, really uh, appealing. So those three areas is what we are focusing on. How does that look in real life? Let me show you first the yeah, roadmap. One second. Uh, before you head to, oh my. Before, before I get really excited, a um, uh, question came in. Can, can we presume that as you're building this out, you're taking mobile, uh, the mobile experience into, into it as Does well? It yes, uh, I work with the mobile team. Every feature that we do, in the, 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 the mobile team is a part of it. They review it. So, they can support things that we're going to support for desktop and, and, and vice versa. But mobile is uh, part of the whole strategy, not only mobile, but then later on, we will move into paginated reports and embedded. What? Paginated reports and embedded too? Yeah, because paginated reports require some uh, improvements for slicers. So, that, uh, so they need that, and I need to work on that area too, so that we can collaborate and make that experience even better for paginated reports. Oh. So there are many areas where it is touching multiple 
PMs. Mm -hmm. And part of this new strategy is to really understand what areas are connected and collaborate. Oh, that's brilliant. Love it. All right. Get on to the, the, the cool, the colors and the, the fun All stuff. All right. Let me see. Opening up there is. Uh, all right, so here is uh, the, there is a whole like we know the personas that we need to supply. We have our goal, the problems that we need to solve, and there is a lot of things that are going to happen, including an object is part of the whole new experience that we want you to have. And an object is a cool thing that R Rosie is uh, working on, but this part of, uh, somehow we are working together as well because she owns the, 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 the formatting pane and an object experience, and that is touching all data visualization. So there is a lot of other areas that we are working on that not necessarily are under my umbrella, but I keep them always in, in mind. For the, how we're going to do this, we're going to work on consistency, like I said. Like, uh, Chris, you, you said, right, we have like four or five uh, scroll bars. So we want to start making things consistent, accessible, flexible, and easy to read. And for that, we're going to apply some laws for human cognition. Okay. Roadmap looks like hey, this. Hey, hey, a question before we before we move to that one, quick. Uh, are you including Excel visuals in here too, or no? Excel visuals, no. Okay. No, this is just Power BI. Fair enough. All right. Uh, how is the roadmap looking? Well, first we're gonna start with indicator cards, which is the the new card visual that I I, I share with you that we're working on. The mm -hmm. goal is to replace the card, the multi-row card, and the KPI card, and use only one single card that does the job even better than the ones that we are offering at this moment. And with that, we're going to work on call-out labels, indicator labels, and all other stuff. But then we're going to go into Cartesians, and, and the idea is to redesign them. And as you can see, Cartesians is a large item that is conformed by labels, plots, legend, primary axis, secondary axis, small multiples, and other Cartesian controls, including the, 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 the scroll bar. Uh, in here is we are right now in the label side. After we finish labels, then you're going to see changes for the plot. And then we're going to go into legend and stuff like that. But there's a lot of things that I, I want to show you of, of what we are thinking to improve. Okay. Everything that we're seeing is important. It is not a design mockup because the design mockup is the final design. Is, 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 is the one that we will use at the end. What you're seeing here is just uh, PM mockups, which is what I use for, for, for to create a strategy and then put everything in a document that then engineers, community representatives, and designers will look, and then they, they will work based on that information. Oh, so um, I am a very visual person, and that's why I always use graphics and things to, to manage my content, especially in the data visualization that is too complex. After Cartesians, after going through all that work, we're going to do slicers. And then we're going we're, we're gonna to do part of whole visuals, which is the pie chart, donut chart, and tree map. Okay. And then we're going to finish or polish the gauge visual just to, to create more uh, interesting things that you can do with it. Um, then in the stage six, we're going to go into, the ta into metrics and table. Uh, there are many. The reason that we want to keep tables at the very end is because I think it's worth to maybe do everything from scratch and give you more controls that at this moment we are lacking. And if I start working on tabular visuals, it will take too long for you to see changes uh, in the whole data visualization space. Uh, and it will be nice at least to give you everything from, from the indicators, Cartesians, slicers, and the other visualizations. So then you have a good foundation to work with while you give us time to really take some quality time to, to redesign tables. And finally, Azure Map is something that I don't own entirely because the Azure team owns Azure Maps. However, there are some areas that I can work with them. And I believe by the moment when we finish all the other data visualizations, we're, we're going to have support infrastructure to, to improve dramatically what the Azure team is going to give us as a Azure map. Uh, uh, Anthony brought up a good question. Are we going to see any new visuals as part of this? Yeah. So there is a, a work uh, that, that we want to do uh, every semester. We include some new data visualizations. 
uh, I need to work with my community representatives to see which visualizations we will implement each semester. But I can show you some of the ideas of what we want to implement. Let me show you. So for the new one, what, what we are thinking is the workload, the GAN chart, uh, Sankey chart, uh, radio chart, heat map, the car browser, uh, support visual, uh, visual, visual, and then the network, cluster map, stream, and then violin, box and whiskers, hierarchy, uh, visual, uh, radial bar, and the financial table. Mm. So those are the ones that we are thinking to implement. And uh, the community representatives, need, they have to look at this list and vote on which is the one that we need to do first. Uh, and then uh, based on that information, we will build the first resources. But this, all these ones should be now part of the default page. Like if you open Power BI and then you go to data visualizations, you should see all of them here mm. uh, in the future. So yes, to answer the question, we are thinking to add. And I hope this list at least gives us a good uh, mm, variety of visualizations that we can use. And so is that something that the community itself is going to vote on, or is that that panel that you're, you're working on? Uh, it, it all depends. If the community representatives believe that it's better to have a whole survey where all the community uh, participate, I will launch a survey just like I did in October last year, mm -hmm. where I asked for some opinions on the look and feel of data visualizations and human cognition. And I'll, I'll launch, I'll, I will send that, in, that, um, that survey and everybody can participate and, and see which one is more important. But if the community representatives come up, they come up with a very large percentage of this is the first one that we need to do, then uh, I'll go with that. Uh, the only way that maybe the, the, the whole community will be part of it is if, number one, the community representatives believe that it's going to be required to have a large audience to vote on certain settings, features, or visuals, or two, the community representatives are not deciding. Uh, we, we don't have a large amount of uh, support. And if we find like something like 55 versus 45 or 50-50, and, and they are not uh, breaking that tie, then the, the community is going to be the, the, the final desire. That, that is uh, just fantastic. And uh, I don't want, I, I mean, I, I, I love how much you reach out to the community. That's great. Don't stop that. But you have some incredible people on that panel. And if they're saying, hey, this is how this should work, you know, and they're, they're you know, that you have consensus amongst them. Uh, I, I honestly, I, I trust them uh, uh, heavily when it comes to that stuff. So. Uh, yeah, cut to the chase, speed this stuff up, and you know, we can always ask for changes later, right? You know, you're, you're not yeah, going to stop yeah, yeah. that, it, you know? Nothing, nothing needs to be perfect uh, the first moment. Uh, we can change, we're evolving, but at least we want to do it in a better way now that we are starting from scratch. Uh, and yeah, uh, having the, the, the community representatives is clearly a amazing um, partnership, and the community will continue having their participation by reaching out to those community representatives or by being a, uh, by keeping an eye on whatever survey we we mm -hmm. sent so then so then they can give some uh, votes as well. Keep sharing your ideas in social media. You can reach out to me in LinkedIn, and if you have any requests, send that over. Uh, use uh, Power BI ideas. Uh, and keep voting in there because we are reviewing that as well. Uh, so you can continue sharing that um, feedback in the way that you have wanted. Uh, all right, Miguel, I am sharing uh, your LinkedIn profile uh, because you said so, um, as well as the Power Bank <laughs> community. Uh, you yeah. guys have heard it here. He said to hit him up on LinkedIn if you have stuff. And, yeah. and, and... <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> all right. Uh, how how is that? Goodbye to your about? inbox, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best. All right. So, how is data hum human cognition playing into this role? Well, let's see that some examples of what I mean. Law of similarity. This is a law that allows us to understand if the gr groups belong together. 
What happens right now when we, by default, apply conditional formatting, and this is an example where, where I came, I like, oh, I opened conditional formatting, I apply certain values in here, and automatically my visual shows those colors. The problem that is not meeting this law is that there is no way for me to understand what is blue, what is uh, yellow, and what is red. It's hard. So the, it, the new improvements will go into the law of similarity, and we will allow you to maybe imagine having a box here where you can actually label this, this, um, this rule, and you can say, this is called bad, this is called fair, and this is called good. And then when you go and press OK, automatically Power BI will give you a uh, legend that you can see uh, that, that information in there. So now you understand what each of these colors mean. I absolutely love that. That's fantastic. Yeah. How about personalization of that? Any of that? Is that going to be an option as well? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So maybe in the future, we want for the, find the end user to select the effects button, and then they can manually change the parameters and see how the visual responds, and then reset it as the report consumer or re report creator uh, did for them. Oh. Um, that's something else that we are exploring to allow. But at least this, you can see the difference. Just that law itself is improving how you read that information. Right. right. The other law is the law of proximity. So here we have a tree map, that our tree map that doesn't even use that law to really improve data visualization. So we perceive all objects in the way that how near they are located with each other. And that will allow us the idea that they belong together. So in the left side, you see that even I'm using the same data as you, uh, we don't have a clear indication of every uh, hierarchy because we are using product, region, and country. In the right uh, side, by using the law of proximity to create or control the separation between each of, each of these buckets, it's really easy to read this information, to see the patterns, than the left side, even though they both contain the same data. This is fantastic. Continuity. So Hang on, right now, go back. Um, any any possibility to, to assist when it comes to like visual gradients, right? So we've got the, the um, you know, you've got your your, your breakouts and your proximity. Uh, any ability to to potentially automatically give that some sort of depth and understanding within there, like. Um, you know, separating out the values, I don't know, something along those lines, maybe giving it some ability to be denser if it's more profitable or something along, the, right? Yeah, all the controls are going to be added for the uh, for the word that I said that belongs to part of whole visual. So here, you're going to be able to do that. Okay, cool. Okay. Awesome. Um, then the other one is uh, low of continuity. Right now, we're missing multiple areas. And this is just an example of many. Uh, mm. We cannot, in, in this example on the left side, we have a axis that contains two groups, the, the category and the product. But Power BI do, do not separate them and create a continuation between each of these elements. So you have a, like, a very messy um, primary axis. Yeah. On the left side, by using the continuity law, you can see everything here is one group. This is another group. And then we have the, 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 the graph. And that's so much easier for anyone to understand their, their visualization versus uh, not having that separation. Oh, that would be fantastic. So you said yeah. March will have that? Oh, uh, this one? No, this is an uh, this is the ax the the primary work. So here is primary axis is that work. Got to try yeah, for you know a, a little faster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's something that, that that we're gonna do. As you can see, even the separator uh, right now in Power BI, you can only have separators in the axis, but it never crosses onto the plot area, and we're gonna allow you to do that as well. Mm. Uh, I, uh, a side question. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love how you're laying this out and you're making it part of one cohesive move and change, right? So you're thinking about these, not just in small isolated features, but 
but you're looking broadly at topics and you've got them all kind of put together inside of uh, an incredible tool here. What, what tool is this? Oh, this is Figma. Figma. Oh, yeah. I haven't Figma. seen anyone from the, the PM team at, at Power BI use Figma before. Are, no. are you a trendsetter, Miguel? Yeah, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. I, 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 no just, I, I like the way you're organizing it. I like the way you're approaching this. So I, I, I'm down. This is great. Beautiful. All right. The law of urine ground. What we want is to support better controls over the plot. And now you can see that there is better control, a uh, color management. And it's so much easier for your eye to see boundaries around each of these plots. At this mm -hmm. moment, Power BI does this. Yeah. So it's really tough to see the boundaries between each plot, especially when you have so many. So now the new, the, the new styles should use some of those uh, improvements for the plots. And as well, you can see here, we have a new legend. That's part of the legend work that we want to do. We want to provide new legend types. And you can see for the, the figure in ground, what it does is it really gives you a good indication what is in the background and what is in the front. And here the plot is really easy to, to see the, the differentiation. But then if we want to make the, the outlines, uh, I, mean, I mean, the grid lines interactive, so then you can use the grid lines to select uh, a bunch of plots. <sighs> then you can see here that now it's easy for my eye to see that this is in the background and this is in the front. And then here, if I select one visual, if I select one plot, then I can see that the, le the, the, the legend I'm sorry, the legend, the, the axis, this one is highlighted. So now I can see that this, this value is in the front and this one is in the back. That this legend has a lot of information here that, that the part is in the, that the, the, this big uh, circle is part of the background. And the one that is highlighted saying that this size is now here and this is the, si this is the, the amount in, for that country um, it, it makes it so much easier to understand what part you have to pay more attention. And that goes along with the, uh, with the, uh, oh, let's we, go. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. So this is how we are going to treat the, the tool tip because now the tool tip needs to be in front of everything. And even if you use another area, like you want to know what this means, another element goes in front. So how we're going to treat elements that are on top of each other reducing the importance of other elements behind, that's a whole journey that we want to really nail down and give you the best, more beautiful report designs, along with many more features that it will take us from this to something like this. And I'm saying to something like this, because once um, um, Erin Millman, who is the designer for data visualizations, was, once she puts her hands on these visualizations, the visuals will look even more stunning of what my limited skills of design uh, <laughs> she's, she's going to do her magic and it's going to be uh, beautiful. Um, Who, who's, who's, who's the designer? I'll, I'll post, uh, I, I'm going to send a, a post in LinkedIn for you to know, but her name is Erin Millman. Uh, she's an amazing uh, designer with a lot of experience in data visualization. She, she worked for a long time with a, a, ex, a group of experts in the data visualization team for whole Microsoft. And uh, now she's gonna be part of our, like she's gonna be our, our designer. And all, all you see here in this document and in this Figma is just for me to create the, the planning stage and then for developers, the community members and the designers to review how much we can take from this and implement it in the tool. But then it's gonna be, up to the design team, especially to her, to take that and make it look amazing, appealing, and really beautiful. All right, so Aaron, hit me up. We I, we, yeah. we gotta talk. All right, so but yeah, we need to talk. Awesome. Her. No, she she prefers to be more in the background. All she right, told me all that right, right. like to be interviewed or things like that. But she's happy to interact with the community representatives. She's okay to be exposed as the designer, but she's uh, she doesn't feel comfortable having um, uh, webinars. No problem. We can, right. we can still talk offline now. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. This is another one, the common region. Common region is a way for us to, to create to how we perceive objects that they belong to a certain group. So we frame them to say, hey, all this that is framed belongs to this group. In Power BI, you can see here that we 
have some kind of separation in here that allows us to understand that this is this is one here, another one is here, but it's not that effective, especially for the axis. Now, if we improve it using that law, it's so much clearer what belongs to what. There, we even have a zero line here, which we want to implement, that it will allow you to see what is positive and what is negative. At this moment in Power BI, there is no way you can see that. There is a zero here, but when you see this in first glance, everything looks positive for your brain. You need to pay more, more attention of exactly where, where, where are the, 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 the plots that are, or the data points that are negative. With this law, applying the law of, um, oh, I forgot the name, uh, <laughs> common region, <laughs> and now, now we can easily see uh, that type, type. So we can see here many, many groups. We can see the first group uh, for the small multiples. Then we can see another group from positive and negative. We can see another group using these lines for each of these uh, uh, period of times. So there is a lot of groups happening by using that law. Uh, and you can see the still, even though that is busy, it's still looking quite uh, clean and nice. This is uh, fantastic. You, Uniform connectedness basically is just how we can connect certain data points so, so your brain understands that they belong together. Right now, Power BI, you can see five lines, but only four people here. And there is not clear that Chris belongs to the orange or the blue. Mm. Uh, we're going to improve that, and it's going to have a better indication of what belongs to what. And you, and you should be able to see them all. Like that, I will send service to all of you about things that we need to improve. I'll give you an example. In, the, in October, I sent this question. What does the red font color on the uh, revenue callout mean? And this was the visual that I put in that survey. So people had to see this red color and then answer, what was that? And it, based on, on that study, I, I checked that 98% of people weren't able to know what, what color was that. So that means that we have a big gap. What can we do if you apply conditional formatting or, or if we add uh, indicator labels? We can allow you to really specify the color that you have and what it represents. So then if I ask you the same question using our new card, you're, it's going to be almost like 99% for you to understand which is the right answer. Things like that, I'm going to send those questions. And then like this one was another one, which country meets this criteria and, and I gave them some, some indications. And this was the visual that they were looking at. At this moment, 89% uh, of the people got that answer, uh, that question wrong. But if, I, if we improve that visualization and we give better uh, plot sizes and, 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 and colors and grid lines and all the stuff, for you to understand that will be so much easier. How do I know what laws I should apply after those uh, surveys that I send? Because each question, believe it or not, or if you think that they are silly or wrong, I put some psychology behind it. And what I'm trying to actually ask you is how good we are with, with uh, principles like similarity, figure and ground, common region. So those are my real questions behind the main question. So you, when, when you answer, you're actually telling me how good we are with those principles and how much room we need to improve. Any questions about the, the and this is, this is so, so the I feedback think. is, uh, uh, we want, we didn't know we wanted all this, but now we want all of this. And, uh, <laughs> I, I kind of feel like, um, uh, the first time I saw like an, an, a trailer for like, uh, any of the trilogy, the second or third trilogies of Star Wars, like there hadn't been any Star Wars for like 20 years. And then you saw like the first preview and it was just like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about that. And um, uh, this feels like movie theater level excitement for me uh, personally. I'm, uh, I'm very excited. Can you talk or do you have any vision around uh, like the theming of your report and uh, uh, the ability to automatically like take it extend upon like I, I know you're gonna like make it so that like as you said uh, uh, 
a report creator just adds his visual on and it just looks fabulous. That's that's good. We yeah. really want that. That's fantastic. How's it going? I, I've 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 been looking for uh, some like enhancements around uh, the theming so that we could take our reports to potentially the next level beyond what you know some of the things you've articulated. Uh, my example has always been uh, for Into the Spider Verse. Mm -hmm. So if you've seen Into the Spider Verse, like radically different color layout, different theme, like even the lines. Uh, uh, in inside of, of of the movie didn't appear like a, a classical uh like animated movie right and are we going to have those degrees of control like where we can set and just define our own lines bring in absolutely. our own fonts and, and that type of no, a thing absolutely. yeah uh, i'm grateful that part of my team uh, owns the theme Okay. And we want to give a better interface where you can control them all in the same tool one thing that we want to implement is you could format a visualization in the way that you want and then maybe present a button or something that you said, make these settings part of your theme. So you click there and all visualizations that, that, that meet that uh, criteria will, will apply it. Instead of you coding or going to another UI and, and make changes one by one, you can just select one visual, apply it. I want this in my theme and now it belongs to you. So there is a lot of improvements we want to do there. However, I think, and many uh, representatives agree that that's going to be like the cherry on top of the cake. What we need is first a lot of options for then you make them beautiful, <laughs> not the other way around, have things beautiful and then give you controls. All right. All right. Um, all right. F fair enough. And uh, uh, we've had this question a couple times in chat, and I haven't been able to get it in. I kind of mentioned it. I, I want to uh, hold your feet to the fire on this one because it's something that I find uh, I've been pushing for this for, I think I'm five years I've now been asking. Maybe seven years I've been asking for this? Yeah. Importing uh, fonts. Yeah. I'll pr oh, oh, that's another one. That, that's a quick win that I'm, I'm thinking that we might be able to put in this semester. Oh, so, yeah. We, yeah, what we want to do is do not import uh, fonts at this moment but we have multiple milestones. The first one is for us to support all Office fonts. So when you open PowerPoint or Word, they already have all the fonts that you can choose from. Right. And the one that Power BI has some very limited. We want to, as milestone zero, as the first step, is to give you at least that list that we support already. And then the milestone uh, one, which is the next step, uh, it will allow, we want to allow you to import your uh, fund and people from other devices can open the report and, st and and they will be able to see that fund without installing that fund in their system. And you said, you think you might be able to do these this semester? The the, 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 the milestone zero, which is expanding the, the funds that we offer. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, we are, I'm thinking that that's gonna be something that we can do this semester. I just need to go through the items for, for our, our semester planning, which is, we, it needs to be ready by April. So I have uh, a few weeks to finish everything. And then once I have all those items, I can see where can I can fit that one. And I'll inform the community if that's going to be part of our uh, official semester planning. Well, that is absolutely fantastic. I yeah. I would love to see that. And, and so everyone who's watching, this is up to you. This is one of those action moments we were talking about. If this is something that's important to you, send Miguel a message on LinkedIn so he can put that in his folder and say, see, Brian Julius said he needs to be able to use fonts. See, yeah, uh, yeah. Justin said he needs to be able to use fonts, right? Like, we've got to get these things in so it becomes a priority, and then it's easy for Miguel to justify adding these features and functionality okay so we gotta be we gotta we can help miguel here so let's make sure that we do all right yep and it will be amazing if you can follow the same roadmap so give me all feedback that you have for the container for the car visual and for the labels because those are the immediate items that we are doing uh, and having early feedback from all of you will be nice because i can share that information to the community representatives and they can put, uh, or, or they can see what a large community are asking and they can represent you because that's, that's their role. All right. Uh, 
I, I, I'm posting your link a, another time in the chat in case someone's like wasn't paying attention, didn't click and save it. It's going back in the chat again because uh, we got we 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 have to help you. You're helping us a ton. We uh, honestly, um, I am so grateful for the amount of effort you're putting into this. Like it it shows. I know you're working crazy hours to try and get this done. Yeah. I know everyone on your team is working. Um, and doing tons Brilliant. of stuff to get this out. Yeah, and we want to be there to help, ex like, make sure you you understand how much we love what you're doing, and let's try to, like, encourage, you know, Microsoft to double, triple, quadruple the size of your team so we can start to get <laughs> these things in, right? I, no, I, yeah, 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 be across. <laughs> yeah, 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 like, let's, let's get this in. Oh. Yeah, please, and, and this is the time when, the support of the community is so important. And trust me, every everything that we see in social media, in the Power BI ideas, the comments that you, that, that you share with us is not just being uh, thrown in the garbage. Like we're, I'm taking all the feedback, putting it in a structured way, organize it so then when it's time for me to work on it, I need to think in a logistic way how I can implement that and how that is going to affect other visualizations then maybe that people that share that, that feedback didn't think uh, large in, in a larger scale. And I'll do that for you. I will take my time to really review every single aspect and make sure that that's going to be something that not only what you're asking will support, but m many other visualizations or capabilities will support them as well. Well, uh, so um, Miguel, that is absolutely amazing. Um, we have three minutes left. Before we do the sign off, I, I just want to, Quick, take a second. I want to uh, let everyone know that we're going to be getting together again next week. I uh, got Johnny Winters. He's going to be connecting in, and he's going to be talking about working with uh, working with the Lake House, working in Synapse. What the heck is a Lake House? We've worked with data warehouses. We work with data lakes. What does it mean to work at a Lake House? So that's going to be very exciting. So please come back and join us back then for or next week for this session. But Miguel. Thank you, thank you, and everyone on your team so much for, for all the help that you're you're giving in this area. Uh, Arun, when you're watching, I I, I I I know Arun watches like all of my videos. It's his biggest thing. He doesn't like uh, so. Thank you, Arun, for for making sure Miguel has all the funding that he needs. And um, let's please make sure that you know everyone who's watching send that feedback to Miguel. Uh, you know, make sure that, you know, everyone hears about the great work that's getting done here. Share this stuff out with other people. That would just be fantastic. Thank you very, you know, that would be um, awesome. Thank you so much, Chris, for the invitation and uh, to have me uh, this time. I'm really, really thankful. Yeah, well, um, uh, I, I can't wait to see what you have coming out. And I, I know you're going to be very re receptive to the, the feedback and, and all the stuff that we've got going on. Um, and yes, everyone, if you are, uh, please do hit that like button, share this live recording out. This will be available for replay. So um, frankly, I think everyone who uses Power BI should come in and see what Miguel has going on. Uh, you can check it out here. You can check it out at uh, Dax Tips. He did the presentation there. Uh, do check out that presentation on Dax Tips. Let me share that again because I think you spent more time in that one on the actual visual. So, you, um, and this was more on the process side. So, I'm going to share that out as well. So, uh, do check that out. And, and thank you guys all for joining us. All right. See awesome. Ya. Take thank care, you. everybody. Have a great day. You too, everyone. See ya. Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.